Hello everyone and thank you for coming here today. My name is Anat Vax and I have been working in Red Hat for the past year and three months. Red Hat is the world leading provider of open source enterprise solutions and I work as a quality engineer in the network team of the OpenShift virtualization product. I actually moved to programming after getting my second degree in musicology and working as a librarian for more than 11 years. In my free time, I enjoy doing DIY projects, building and creating things with my hands, such as building my own arcade station in my living room. I feel like knowing how to program is no less than a superpower, no less than the powers of the superheroes from the comic books. I remember the first game I developed in my studies. It was a very simple game, just some basic shapes. It was a blue background as water, and there was a green circle as a frog and some brown rectals, rectangles as logs. And as the player, you, you needed to help the frog cross the river from one end to the other. And how I remember how amazed I was by the fact that I created this very simple yet really much existing universe within my computer. A universe with which my daughter, who at the time was six and a half, can play with. A true superpower. I came here today to share with you a bit of my journey with Arduino, explain to you the basics and show you how you can harness your programming skills combined with the strength of Python to use it. So why should you learn to program microcontrollers? The first reason is that programming microcontrollers can help you unleash your creativity. Many roads can take us to the same destination, and when you tackle a problem in real life and search for the best solution for it in order to automate it, you need to think about the best materials to use, you need to think about the physics around it, and it can be as challenging as you want it to be. For example, I built a fish feeder, so I needed to think about the best material to store the food for the food compartment, so I knew it can't be wood and it can't be metal, it must be some sort of plastic. I needed to find the right container, and then I needed to think about the best way to dispose the food into the aquarium, and so on. Another reason is that working with hardware and solving problems in the real world requires a different approach than the one we are used to from being a software developers. As software developers, we're used to just downloading a library we need to and trying it out. And if it doesn't work as we expect it to, we can just download another one. And this is a matter of minutes. But working with hardware, you need to think about your project end to end. You must plan ahead the entire project. You must learn and choose all the components required for the project even before you start programming. And you need to think and make sure that the different components work well together. In hardware, you need to order all the components that you want and need. And if you don't make sure that they work well together, you will need to make another order. And this can take days and even weeks. And this really sharpened the ability for us as programmers to see the big picture and think about all the fine details even before we start implementing. Another reason is that microcontrollers are very versatile. You can build with them almost anything you can think of. And you can add IoT powers to almost anything in your surroundings. You can make every device a smart device. And once you connect your device to the internet, you can use it to automate your daily routines. Plus, programming microcontrollers is really fun. Microcontroller is a system built on a chip. It has the CPU, the flash memory, it has RAM, serial communication, and other peripherals all built in into the same single chip. And the microcontroller also allows connections of all necessary attachments like sensors and devices that the product will require. There is a huge variety in the microcontrollers in the market and there's a great variety in their spec. And this is important to keep in mind that you need to choose the right microcontroller for the job you want to, to, want to use it for. For the talk today, I choose to use the Arduino Uno microcontroller. Arduino is an open source software and hardware company that both design and manufacture single board microcontrollers. And the Uno is a very well-known microcontrol microcontroller and can be easily found in the market. And it is also available in beginner's kit, which comes with sensors and other peripherals that you can connect to it. 
The microcontroller board comes with both digital and analog input and output pins that the developer can connect different sensors and write programs that would both read and write uh, data and signals from them. If you were told that, told that working with electronics, you must know how to solder, working with microcontrollers such as the Arduino Uno, this is really not the case. All the sensors can be connected using jumper wires, which also come in these lovely colors, and no soldering is required. The best way to start programming Arduino is by getting one of the many beginner's kit that are broadly available in the market. And I gathered him here some sensors that came with my beginner's kit, but uh, there are many other possibilities available. So for example, you have the ultrasonic distance sensors that can be used, for example, in robotics to help them avoid obstacles, or the character LCD display that allow communication with the users. And there are literally 100 more sensors like that available in the market. The Arduino IDE is used for writing the Arduino program, for compiling it, and also for uploading it to the board. The Arduino program, which is basically a C++ program, is called a sketch. The IDE includes the verify button, the one with the V there, that compiles the sketch and shows you error, if there are any. And the upload button, the one with the arrow there, that when you press it, it compiles your sketch into a bytecode on the host computer and then transfer it through the serial port to the Arduino board and burn it on the onboard memory. Once you upload the sketch to the board, it is stored there, even if you unplug the board from the power source. And it will stay there until you upload a new sketch to the board. This means that when you unplug your Arduino from electricity and then you plug it back, It'll work, it will automatically start running the last sketch you uploaded to it. So how can you enjoy what Arduino Uno and other microcontroller has to offer and combine it with your Python power? This again depends on the microcontroller you choose to use. The Pi Serial is a module that encapsulates access to the serial port on the microcontroller. And Pi Firmata is a Python interface for the Firmata protocol. This is a protocol that allows serial communication between microcontroller and any software connected to it. The Arduino IDE comes with the Firmata protocol pre-installed on it, so it's really easy to use. You can simply run the standard Firmata sketch, which is available on the IDE from the Arduino, and then you can control the Arduino through your Python code. These two are Python modules that you can combine with the Arduino ID. And actually, you can use them with almost any microcontroller available in the market. Python, because of its uh, processing demands, require a full computer. And so it's too heavy to run directly on the microcontroller. And this is why Python program must be executed from the computer to the Arduino board. And this is great. If you want to use your Arduino connected to the computer, that's not a problem. But if you need your Arduino to run on its own, you can't really use these libraries to write Arduino code in Python. For this, there are other options. MicroPython, which is a subset of Python that can run effectively on microcontrollers. It is based on the language capabilities rather than actual Pythonic code. So it behaves as you expect it to, but implemented differently. Because of MicroPython's demands, not all microcontrollers support it, and Arduino Uno, unfortunately, is one of the unsupported microcontrollers. For these microcontrollers, only PySerial and PyFirmata are valid options. And there is also SecretPython, a Python sub-language created by the Adafruit company for use with their uh, uh, products. SecretPython is based on MicroPython, and it basically adds hardware support to Python. MicroPython and CircuitPython are installed directly on the microcontroller. So this means that you can program microcon microcontrollers directly with Python. By the way, all these languages and libraries are open source. So we can use Arduino to connect sensors and get data and input from the external world and commit actions in it. But how can Python help us? Once we retrieve the data from the sensors, we can read them in our Python program and use its capabilities on it. So I created this demo to demonstrate the basic applications of Arduino with Python. But this project would have really helped my father some years ago. My parents used to live in this big house with a basement. And when it got rainy heavily, 
at the basement sometimes got flooded. So in rainy nights, my father used to lay down awake in his bed, wondering whether the basement is flooded and if the water pump is working, working correctly. And if he had a way to, to know ahead if there is a flood or if the water pump, um, pump is broken, he could have slept much better. So first, let's take a look at how this looks like. And in a minute, we will take a look into the code. So first, I compile the, the, the sketch in the Arduino IDE, and then I run the Python program. And this creates a virtual object, that you'll see in a second, that resembles the level of the water. Now I dip a water sensor inside a glass of water. And the far as I dip it, the higher the water level is, as you can see. And uh, uh, my Python code also sends data back from the Python program to the Arduino board, which causes the LEDs to be lit in, in the different ways. So if the water level is low, the blue LED will blink. And if the water level is medium, the blue LED will be lit. And if the water level is high, then the green LED will be lit. So let's take a look at how this is implemented. So first, I declare some variables. I have the sensors for the water, water pin. It is connected uh, to the analog pin zero. And I also set the sensors pins for the green and blue LEDs. I have a delay here that we will use later. And I declare a string that I'm going to read the data into. So uh, in the IDE, every uh, an Arduino sketch must implement two methods. One is the setup, which is run once every in every sketch, and it just gets all the components ready for the run. So in the setup, I have a serial, I have a call to serial begin, and I sent it a 9600, which is the number of bits per second, which is actually the speed that I'm going to be using. And then I'm calling the pin mode with the pin numbers that I declared earlier and setting them as <coughs> output pins, meaning that they will expect to get a, a, a five volt out of them. And the second method that the sketch must implement is the loop. And this is the heart of our program. This runs constantly and checking on our sensors and on our pin, figuring out if, uh, uh, if, uh, if the data we're waiting for has, uh, has arrived and doing actions according. So I'm in my loop. I'm first of all reading my analog data from the water sensor. And then I'm printing it to the serial port. And this is really important because this is the way my Python code will know how to get this data from the Arduino. And then I'm checking if there is any serial data to be read in my serial port. And if there is, I read it. And then I check what I got. If I got the L character for low, this means that first of all, I need to make sure my green LED is off. And then I'm going to turn my blue LED on. I'm sending high concurrency to it. I'm going to delay for 15 milliseconds and then turn my blue LED off. This will cause it to blink. If I get the character M for medium, I'm going to turn my blue LED on and if I get the character H, I'm going to turn my green LED on. Now I'm going to reset my string and I need to delay for 100 milliseconds. And this is important and uh, the amount of delays depends on your, what you're programming because otherwise the data won't be transferred correctly between Arduino and Python. And now let's take a look at the Python code. So first of all, I need to import some libraries, the PySeria library, vPython for the virtual objects and the IO. I'm creating this board serial object that will basically open a port in communication with my Arduino board. So I'm sending it the port COM3, which is the board my Arduino is connected to. In other computers, it can be other ports. This is depends on, on your machine. And I'm setting the baud rate, which is the speed again to 9600. And this must be identical to the speed rate I set in the Arduino code. 
I'm also creating this SIO object that I will use to flush the data from Python to Arduino. And I'm creating two virtual objects. The water object, the cylinder, the blue cylinder you saw in the demo, that resembles the water level. And a label, which is just the digits inside it to show the water level in digits. I have here this simple function that allows me to send serial data from Python to the Arduino, and all it does is write serial data and flush it. And now my while loop. This is a, a complement to the loop we saw in the Arduino code just a minute ago. So first of all, I need to, to see if I have any data waiting to be read on my serial port. And if I do, I read it. Then I'm checking if it's digits and I don't have any garbage in it. I turn it into float and I want to turn it into more manageable data. So between being between, instead of being between zero and 641, I change it to be between zero and six. And now I check what I got. If my water level is one or smaller, I'm going to send to the Arduino L, which causes the blue LED to blink, if you remember. And if it's between one and four and a half, I'm going to send M. And if it's higher than four and a half, I'm going to send H. And all those changes the LEDs on the Arduino. Now I'm going to change the text in the text object to show the water level. And I'm going to change the length of my cylinder to resemble the water level. And I make sure here that it's it won't be zero, because in VPython, sometimes if the length of the object is zero, they just disappear and you can't really retrieve them. And that's it. So in conclusion, before you start your new project, which I hope you'll start soon, some things you need to remember. First of all, you need to choose the right microcontroller for the job. As I said, the spec of the microcontroller cannot be changed. And you need to make sure you choose the right one to do what you need it to do. And you also need to choose the right library to use with it because not all microcontroller supports all, um, all models. And this sometimes can go the other way around. If you know you want to use MicroPython, for example, you need to choose a microcontroller that will support it. And the last thing is that you really need to think about all the sensors and attachments you want to connect to it because it's really a bummer that you need just this small component and you need to wait two weeks for it to arrive and then it doesn't work with the other one. <laughs> you just think it through before you start. So I have a GitHub live, um, um, page with all the code I showed you here with uh, uh, comments for the code and also uh, all the setup and uh, show you how to connect uh, the, the Arduino and the LEDs and everything if you want to create the same uh, project that I did here. And also some resources for uh, reading and uh, starting your Arduino journey. And I also gather here three open source projects that combine Arduino and Python. I won't really go into them, but just to show you uh, what you can do, there's really endless possibilities. And you have a link to all of them. Again, open source, you can see the code. Uh, and this is just a taste. The world is open to you. And one last thing, I work at Reddit, as you know, and we have uh, open positions. Uh, the boot is gone now, I think, but you can talk to me if you're interested. And that's it. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, question? That's, uh, from my experience, maybe I'm wrong about that, but when, when you uh, inject the code to the Arduino board, then the serial becomes very busy. Then? The serial, the serial board, yeah. the, the one that you identified as a COM3, yeah. becomes busy. Yes, right. So how how the Python code gets involved and it tries to read the information from the serial? Because there is going to be a collision, at least from my minimal experience between the two. I, when I always injected the code inside the other link, it started to execute. And then when I came with the Python code, I wanted to read some data from the serial, it complained about how the serial is busy. So how do you overcome Yeah, you're right. So I'm using here the, the print line. Where is it? The print line, the serial print line. And actually, there is a button here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. There is this button here that if you press it, it opens the serial communication that you can see the serial prints of the Arduino. And when you use it, this locks 
the, the COM3 port in my example, it locks your serial port. And then you can't reach it from your Python code because the Python code will lock it as well. So you shouldn't open it. You just run the sketch. You can close your, your Arduino ID after that because it's your, sketch, your sketch is already on your board. And then you use your Python code to lock, to lock the port. And it will lock it. So you can't open it here now. Yeah. So, so what, what is the flow of the information? It, 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 like you have the sensor, the sensor is going to, to the Python code which is running on your computer yeah. via the Arduino and then back, yeah. back to, to the Arduino to flash the lights. So you have this sensor which I used and this is connected directly to the Arduino and the Arduino reads it. It reads it and sends it to the serial port. And my Python code is connected to the serial port and reads yeah, data. Yeah. So it has to stay hooked on. It has to stay hooked on. Sorry. So it, it has to stay hooked to the computer. So basically, it must be hacked. This is so what I said. So that is the problem. So you're not doing any processing. So so you're using the the <coughs> Arduino as a bypass. Basically, you're passing the information to the computer. Yes. And then and then the doing the heavy lifting on the computer and doing it back. I'm using computer. both of them. I'm using the Arduino to control to to read the data from my sensor and to send data to the LEDs that were yeah. connected here. So I'm using it to, to read data from the world, and I, I can do anything. I can set a servo motor that will move something here. I can do so much things with back with it. And then I'm using Python to with the data. So in Arduino, you can't really create like virtual objects. I can create an, an entire virtual universe from sensors that I connect to my Arduino. And then you can send data back from Python to the Arduino, and they both use the serial, the serial connection, both to send the data and to get the data. Did I answer your question? Oh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to understand it. I, I wanted to confirm I understood correctly the flow. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I also have here some sensors of some other microcontrollers from the Arduino brand. And if, if you want to check them out, I brought them candies. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you.